myself, Phil and I co-produced Rap Live. Oh, and great. Beth is not only an interviewer on the show, but she is the host of the show. Great. <laughs> Thank you. And all our interviewers on the show. Yeah, we're just, um, we just did a couple dates. Okay, here and there. Mm -hmm. Until the record comes out. See where the next offer comes from. Mm -hmm. but they're just shooting cutaways right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> Do any of you do any of you play instruments? Off, I know you don't on stage. We, either, you know, we, we have no act. Rip. We rip. rip. <laughs> Acting and songwriting with them. Just love it. There. You know, if we tried to do this on our own instrumentally, we'd be a garage <laughs> band. <laughs> oh no, a very bad garage oh, band. Okay. <laughs> How many different bands have you had with this? With who's Harper? Yeah, who's? Right well, I'll just be asking you all these questions again so you're prepared. What are we good? You go. Uh, no, we're not allowed. To. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we're not. We're not filming the show, are we? What? We're not filming the show. No. no. Oh, Rasmus. Shannon's got some dynamite tattoos. Drama show. Yeah. yeah. Um, Beth did the oh, upstairs the right best right Does it really? Sorry to say I've never seen any of them. Warren. Warren has a tattoo artist that travels with him now. Really? Yeah. And does what? Gives him tattoos and what they're One of the guys that he Jerry just had a fresh one. He got the night before we did the interview. It's like a good person. Mom. No. There's a deck of playing cards that we, uh... I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's lonely nights on the road. <laughs> so now we know what side of us We've met the guys. No, oh, no. This is the lonely guy. This is Toy Boy. This is Bondage Babe. Bondage Babe. I don't need. I can't, I can't now wait till he's done filming and I want to look. Yeah, because so I wouldn't talk to him because I don't have it on. Yeah, one bar. We never leave. Hi, this is Beth from Rock Live, and tonight I'm at Hammerjacks with these Cycle Sluts from Hell. Girls, welcome to Baltimore. It's good to have you back here. Uh, do you like playing Hammerjacks? Oh, yeah, we love it. It's definitely the most enthusiastic audience we have on the coast. Is it? Okay. Is it what's your favorite place to play? Is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> honestly, honestly, it is. Yeah, <laughs> I know it sounds like. Where are we now, Cleveland? Yeah, that's our favorite. But no, Hammerjacks is, is our personal favorite. Great. Well, first of all, I'd like everybody to introduce themselves and tell a little bit about the names. There's a lot of interesting names to this band. We're not like uh, Mary Lou Jane's here. Let's start over my far right. Oh, I'm Venus Penis Crusher, and uh, I was born in the island of Afros, where I rose from a sea a foam of semen, and I, I traveled to New York, where I met the rest of the cycle sluts and I came to crush penises and this is this is who I am all right um, I'm Queen Vixen and I cannot top that one for the life of me I'm not even gonna try okay. I'm honey one percenter and the way I got my name is much too involved to discuss on a little video segment so I'll just wait till the book comes out I'm Chief Fire of Ice. I like fire, but I'm pretty icy. <laughs> no. Tell me, but tell me, how did you guys get the name The Cycle Sluts from Hell? It kind of evolved. It wasn't something that we planned on. I don't. Would you like to take that one, honey? <laughs> would you like me to have that? Oh, well-bred Queen Vixen. <laughs> Um, we were given that name by this guy, Glenn Benson, who was running a bar on First Avenue, which was like virtually the only Manhattan biker bar on the Lower East Side, and we all worked there. And he started a night of the kind of music, the kind of ilk of music we would listen to, um, a Cycle Slut from Hell Night, and gave us the name, and then we started the band. There was like about 10 or 12 of us, and the four of us put the band together. I read there was like a, a biblical reference to Adam and Eve and the cycle sluts from hell in an article I read. Does anyone want to touch that? That's the one in Fad Magazine. Yeah, right. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's beyond me, but... <laughs> anyone want to take that? It's really difficult to understand that article. I don't know what was going on, but... <laughs> we had... The girl that interviewed us was pretty interesting, and we just got into these huge, heavy conversations with her while she was interviewing us, so just bits and pieces of that got in there, so... 
I guess that was kind of confusing by the time it all came out on paper. <laughs> yeah. So you guys originated in New York? It was, uh, she was referring to Lilith and like the demons and the dark side of women, things like that. <laughs> dark side of women, that's the dark side of men, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> so you guys originated in New York, and how long has the band been together? About three years. Going on our three and a half, yeah. We knew each other vaguely <laughs> before we put this band together, and I'm sure none of us expected we would ever end up in a band together. <laughs> we just knew each other from like doing laundry and you know, <laughs> okay. carousing the same bars. And does anyone have a musical background? Yeah, we all. I mean, did it? We have music. Other bands. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. It's just a while before we came together to put this one together. We were all competing against each other <laughs> in our much own bands. This way. Yeah. You know, we don't have to compete. We had the same clothes before, and now we're together doing it. Don't How did you decide to get together if there was so much competition? Well, because we were. <laughs> oh no! Because she's asking. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> because we were. Um, because we were all working together in the same bar, you know, and because there were so many girls called Cycle Sluts, people were thinking that it was a band. And so just um, kind of on a whim, just as something fun to do, we decided to put something together. We never intended this to go this far when we first started. It was it was just something that we it did well. to have fun. No, it was for fun. It was a joke. You know, it was like, hey, let's get together. Let's... Let's just like sing some songs and people took us really seriously and we're like, I don't believe this. Well, let's write some music and we did. And now here we are today. The thing is, the music was never a joke. We might be jokes, but the music is not a joke. In the very beginning, we, you know, I'm, I know that when we first sat down at the bar with Jack Daniels in front of us and said, oh, let's do a gig. I wasn't thinking that it was going to be long term, you know. Who does most of your writing? We all do the lyric writing, and uh, Lord Roadkill, who isn't with us, who was with us, he helped us conceive the band. He was the only guy in the bar who would give us time of day, um, writes most of the music. But now, we, we've gone through so many lineup changes that we've always felt like we were in transit with a lot of musicians. It just wasn't gelling, and finally we have a, a band that we're really proud of. We have Hero from EZO and Bobby Gustafson from Overkill and J.D. Mallow from Mike Monroe Band in addition to Lord Roadkill so the band sounds great and the writing has gotten I think a lot more sophisticated along the way. This, you know, the, our, our beginnings were funny but we had something to offer because a lot of people kept coming back to see us. I mean we, we thought they were just coming to see us to suck but after a while <laughs> they looked like they were really into it so you know something was there. There was definitely a chemistry. All of a sudden, when we were on stage together, it just worked really great. And it was something we just had to continue because it felt great. And like now with the band, it's great. We all get along <laughs> and have a lot of fun. Do the four of you get along pretty well? Four women together, is there ever uh, any tension? <laughs> we're, very, we're all very different people, but we mesh together very well. And it's, it's a miracle. But it's a, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> those puffy number days, and you know what those are like, okay? It's difficult on everybody. We're trying to get Midal to sponsor our tour, <laughs> and our motto is going to be, if we don't feel good, you don't feel good. <laughs> and our crew knows about that. Do you get along with the guys? How do the guys feel being the backup for the four women? How does it? How do, do they? No, it takes special guys because we've had guys in the band before that really had a hard time with it, and these, yeah, it's real tough on some guys. You have to, uh, you know, I, the music business is very macho, you know, so it's hard for some guys. But these guys are great. The ones we have now, they're they're the best. What problems have you run into being a female band in such a male-dominated business? Yeah, you know, they they just want to see like the you know, oh how that's nice a woman can sing that's nice dear sing your little song and move along but it's not with us they're kind of like scared of us mostly in the business so they always like to put us down a lot but forget about them. I think we have collectively is constantly being corralled into this category of female rocker that we don't have anything to do with that we want to transcend because we're for the most part individuals first and when we're together as a band we we know exactly what we're doing and what we're all about and I think we convey that live really well but I think a lot of 
media entities don't know how to interpret that just yet. It's also probably because our record isn't out too, and I think when the record's out, it's going to clear up a lot of a lot of the mystery, and people will be less apt to make us out to be what they want us to be. Right. When is your record being released? It's with Epic, correct? Epic, right. When will that be released? Early spring. It'll probably be released in Europe first, and then the States, and um, yeah, I would say early to mid-spring. You'll be touring in uh, Europe, the UK, to start with? Have you been abroad at all yet? Is this the first time? That's a plan to go over there first and um, twist their minds a bit. <laughs> How do you prepare for that? How are you guys going to prepare for a tour that takes you overseas? Yeah, little adapters oh, for, our <laughs> <laughs> for our hair dryers. <laughs> Great. Where do you guys get your wardrobes? Well, it's a lot of leather going on here and some interesting uh, accessories. Pieces from, from the <laughs> past the and present. Of yeah, from the bottom of the closet. We have a closet. <laughs> we're pretty eclectic in the wardrobe wear. department. We just uh, <laughs> comfort first in a fashionable yet functional wardrobe. <laughs> I understand you have a friend in London that does some designing for you. Oh, yeah. Petra, Petra Tischler from Red Balls on Fire. She's great. She um, does all the leather stuff, all the belts, Honey's belt, all the belts here. Yeah, I'm not wearing one though. Where's your belt? I left it upstairs. What part of London? I'm going in January. Kensington? Kensington? Okay. Great. It's a great outfit. Do you guys do a lot of sharing? Wardrobe sharing? No? No? Strictly everyone stay out of everyone else's closet. <laughs> Wear anybody else's stuff. Like, don't, don't borrow from no. each other. We have. I never. I have no. Uh. Well, we all have different. We. I mean, like to to the average person, we all look the same, but we all have very specific tastes in what we like. Yes. <laughs> you don't want to come near. It's got the chemical reaction going. Chemical reaction. <laughs> That's right. Tell me, are you sluts? I have to ask. I mean, the names in the band. What? What? Does the name apply? No, <laughs> I don't know. Well, we, well, I don't know. We name is very representative of the attitude and the style. Now, I mean, the the way we got that name, it was real honest origins. That's not something we sat around and made up. Um, we used to we. We've toned down a lot since we've become professional. We used to be pretty wild and uncontrollable, excess. and we had a. a um, panache <laughs> for, for getting things we wanted and not necessarily having to negotiate for them. <laughs> we, you know, and we were pretty rowdy. Of course, we're not anymore. We're business women. <laughs> and <laughs> and so it depends on how you mean sluts. I mean, a lot of people are sluts. It's a figurative term. It's completely. Really. The name is really not what we think of ourselves. It's just kind of a name that we like. Sounds good, and it's like a movie title almost. Uh, the, the biggest sluts I know are corporate sluts, anyway. You know. Oh, I, I didn't even notice the announcement. Okay. I don't even remember what I said. Why don't we just go on to another question? <laughs> Do you guys find that you're intimidating to men? Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Because for for um, especially men in the music business, they're used to having women that are that are willing to be sort of secondary and in the background, you know, while he gets the limelight. And that, and you know, we're in a position where we're getting a lot of limelight and we're making decisions for ourselves. And I think that a lot of guys, at least the guys that we know in the music business or in bands, find that really disconcerting. You know, we're women with brains. Malleable either. We're pretty domineering, <laughs> to say the least. Okay, do you have a problem with male groupies? A lot of male groupies. Are the guys in, in in your band protective of you out on the road? No, of no. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. No, no, no. They just they they just throw us out into the crowds and then they go go me. I need that back for the next gig. Come back here. It's my property. How would you? I'm sorry. No, I'm so no. That, that's basically the point I was trying to make. How would you describe your music? Oh, wow. Who wants to take that? It's like um, blues based with heavy metal edge and dreamlike, sort of. I don't know. Bada bing. <laughs> What would the ultimate ultimate success be for the cycle slots? 
What ultimately do you want? Sky's the limit when it could, in our heads. <laughs> we don't have any Sky's limit. <laughs> I think basically to just keep doing this and having a good time. I mean, I hate to be like one of those, ass can I say assholes? <laughs> we just want to have a good time. I mean, we want to make shitloads of money too, you know. But, really big but we, we want to still like, you know, ha enjoy what we're doing. I mean, we're having a blast now. We could afford a like clothes and a little right. more food perhaps but more alcohol but um basically to yeah. <laughs> more we just want more <laughs> all access universe yeah universe all access that's about it <laughs> tell me about being on the uh wharton downey jr show oh more he was cool he was funny he was loud he had some nice teeth you know smokes a lot he was really nice to us, and we were kind of shocked, you know, but it was a fun show. What was the basis for the show? What was, it was, what was the topic? It was supposed to be um, censorship and rock, but I don't think it was handled very well. We thought we were going to be crucified, and we expected the usual questions like, are you really a slut, and why do you feel you need to, you know, decline young America's morals and all that. But he was pretty cool, and he knows it's, you know, some, a certain element is showbiz, and uh, I think he really gave us an opportunity to express ourselves. Plus, it was before we were signed. It was a really big break for us because it was national media. Helped us get signed, yeah. So what do you think about censorship? Uh, yeah. Very bad, very, very bad what's going on because um, it's it's just the powers that be are the powers that be and they seem to be able to manipulate, you know, how people should live their lives. It's wrong. I think everybody knows that, but people kind of get lazy and comfortable and don't open their mouths. Anyone else? People should just keep doing whatever they want to do in art. I mean, I not even think about the censorship issue just do it and it will be there and it will be good and people will want to look at it and they'll get it out there and it will sell that's what i think is there anything you guys really dislike about being a band anything you really dislike about the music business in general and what do you really <laughs> you want to get right down to it uh I, there's you know, you, it's it's really, you can't be naive. At, at a certain point you realize that it doesn't pay to be naive and you gotta be a little hip to watch out for your own ass because everybody's gonna stab you in the back. But, you know, as, if you can just keep a grasp on what you're all about and what you're doing and why you're doing it and you like it and just keep your perspective, it's, things are pretty cool. There's some really cool people. The guy who signed us to CBS, Tony Martell, is like an extraordinary, extraordinary person. and. You know, so there's We've people that really don't fit the cliche. The label. label. You know, they really understand where we're coming from. We're always astounded. They see exactly our vision more than anyone else, you know, in the business that we've encountered. And you, usually people say, oh, yeah, well, you have to push to get your ideas across. And, but it's, it's been miraculous. It's great. How did you get signed to Epic? How did you go about in that process? Well, it was <laughs> it was a twist of fate. I don't know. Somebody else want to feel no, this? No, I, don't, I didn't was don't know how to start that one. Yeah, it was a twist. <laughs> of, but we had a manager um, for a little while who was who after he started managing us started working at Epic, and he brought our tape in there, and it got into the hands of uh, Dave Blue and his wife, who are executives over at CBS, and. Um, or he is, not his wife. Anyway, she made him listen to this tape while they were on the beach in Florida over and over again. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, now, yeah, now it was up And there. so that got really got his attention, and then it just kind of snowballed from there. We got signs. And we happened to have a couple other labels wanting us at the same time, so that helped, you know. How did you decide on a label then? Oh, that was the label we wanted to go on, okay. without a doubt. Well, we, you know, we, could, we also just from hanging out we knew a lot of people in the business and we got a feel for the personalities of the different labels and everyone at CBS has always been really cool to us you know just on a social level so we gravitated towards that anyway and then when we were in, with them on a business level I didn't mean to like shit on anybody's head there they've been great they really have you know like yeah, like every business you have your assholes and you have your cool people and the label has been predominantly very cool with us Video that they provided. It's, it's cuts from video. It's okay. from a number of different club appearances. So we'll refer okay. to that. And 
and also uh, Honey's fabulous boots because we've got some good shots of that. So okay. Can tell us the story on tape. Okay. And then, and then we'll, we'll close. Okay. Are you rolling? Still rolling? Yeah. Okay. Tom, do you have a video out? Yes. Is there any video we can see? Congress, I think you should. Oh, a friend of ours, Gregory Harrison, very talented art director, director, shot scenes of us from all different clubs in New York, and he just really captured a great little two-minute video of this song, Conqueror. So you'll be seeing it soon. And honey, before we go, tell us about your boots. They're hand-painted? Right. Oh. This is, um, there's this triptych by this artist, Hieronymus Bosch, called uh, Garden of Earthly Delights, and one panel is called the Garden of Eden, one's Hell, one's the Garden of Earthly Delights, and it's uh, just... I don't know, it's medieval and it, it's very trippy, so I took elements from the paintings and just uh, painted it on my boots to cover all the you sticker marks. You did the painting? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's very, oh, that's great. Other talent, she's an artist as well. She sings and paints. Good, I have a pair of boots in my car. I'll bring them in after the interview. Why, well, thank you very much for spending some time with us before you go on stage. Good luck with everything, especially your European tour and your album. And can't wait to have you back at Hammerjacks. This is... Good, glad to hear it. This is Beth with Rock Live at Hammer Jacks with the Cycle Sluts from Hell. Okay. This is very awkward. <laughs> I feel like I'm fishing. <laughs> this is Beth from Rock Live and I'm in... This is Beth from Rock Live, and I'd like to thank the Cycle Sluts from Hell for uh, allowing us to interview them. <laughs> now see what happens. <laughs> this is Beth from Rock Live, and I just interviewed the Cycle Sluts from Hell at Hammerjacks. I'd like to thank them. Thank, thank you very you much. You. Okay. Okay. Really? This is Beth at Hammerjacks with the Cycle Sluts from Hell. One more still, and then we'll do the Together. <laughs> I know, matching boots. We're the Cycle Sluts from Hell. We're the Cycle Sluts from Hell. Alright, are we going? Uh, we're the Cycle Sluts from Hell, right? <laughs> <laughs> Last time I checked. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can we do that together? You want to do that together? Let's do We're the Cycle Sons from Hell and Rock Lives, lives at with Rock Live. With Rock Live. With Rock Live or at Rock Live. Okay. okay. One, two, three. We're the Cycle Sluts from Hell and Rock Lives with Rock Live. <laughs> She's gonna say one more for Satan. <laughs> Can we do one more for Satan, Can we please? Do one more for Satan? <laughs> <laughs> okay. One, two, three. We're, We're the cycle sluts from hell. And Rock lives with Rock Live. Oh my god, forget about it. Okay, let's do it again. Alright, we're going to do it again? Rock Wives. Rock Wives. Rock Wives. Rock Wives. Alright. One, two, three. Ouch. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. We're the Cycle Sluts from Hell. And Rock Lives with Rock Live. Okay. It's alright. It's alright. I don't really care. I just, the only reason I didn't, I was, I just was cold. For a place called Big Joe's in Mount Vernon. I want a, a couple new ones, but I just don't have the money. Oh, I got it a long time ago. I was pretty young. And I wanted something that was um, classically male. And uh, they're kind of macho, but I wanted to do it female, feminine. That's why. Okay.
Do you have my address on the uh, on that sheet that you signed? Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.